So there, there may have been a mistake in the notes that when we define the deviatoric stress, so the deviatoric stress, Sij, is equal to sigma Ij minus one-third sigma Kk delta Ij. So I think at the end of last lecture, we had sort of gotten to the point where we had this generalized Hooke's law. So the, the Cauchy stress is sigma ij kl epsilon kl, right? So this is, I don't know if I said it, but this is known as generalized Hooke's law. And I think I mentioned that because the, the strain tensor is symmetric, then that imposes symmetry on K and L. So in other words, C I J K L is equal to C I J L K. And because the stress tensor is symmetric, that imposes symmetry on I and J. So C I J K L is equal to C J I. Um, KL. And then also, because of the way we define C as the partial derivative of some strain energy density functional, the order of operations or the order of this differentiation here doesn't matter, right? I can, I can take the first, I can take the derivative with respect to IJ first or the derivative with respect to KL first. And so that then imposes uh, a ma ma major symmetry on the indices so that CIJKL equals CIJKL, I'm sorry, KLIJ, right? And so given all of those things, the, the 81 components of CIJ, and <coughs> everybody know why there's 81 components? Because I, J, K, and L each go from one to three, right? So. So three times three times three times three is 81. So, but given these symmetries, that takes it down to how many? Unique. Unique. 21, all right, so this is, so then there's 21 components. And so since there's only 21 unique components, sometimes, and, and exploiting the symmetry of uh, the two t uh, the strain and stress tensors, Sometimes it's a little more convenient to write this in something we call Voigt notation. Um, so it's, it's more of a vectorized notation than a tensor notation. So we're going to have a, vec a stress vector now, and the order is important. Um, the diagonals go first. matrix
like that. And so the rest is symmetric. And those, if you count them, that's your 21 components. Right here? That is a three. I just didn't. So those are 21 unique components. And th you know we write, this is point notation. So uh, you know here we write, a, this is a stress vector. Uh, and this is a matrix. And this is a vector. And this type of material is called a triclinic material. And thankfully, there aren't too many of those, because I wouldn't want to go to the lab and do 21 independent experiments to populate that type of material. So this type of material has no planes of symmetry. Right? But the reality is most materials have at least one plane of symmetry. And if it has at least one plane of symmetry, then we can reduce the number of um, material properties, material constants you need to describe the relationship between stress and strain. Uh, 